Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and we're still looking into Joshua chapter 6, a very interesting chapter, and there's so much food here, so we're just kind of swimming around, and there's nothing wrong with that. When you get in the pool, you swim around, but you're still in the same pool. So we're right here in the same pool, and we're looking at the Word of God. The Word of God is alive, it is active, sharper than, sharper than any double-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of spirit and soul and the bones and the marrow. Wow. You know, it's interesting how it talks about the physical part. The bones and the marrow? Well, I don't know if that's spiritual, but I know that the bones are real and the physical is real, but it said it also divides the spirit from the soul. There's a difference. Well, let's look at the Word of God. And we were talking about actually Joshua chapter 1 through 2 uh, on Friday, but let's just go through that again. It says, and, jo and, uh, and now Jericho was straightly shut up. It was closed up tight because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Closed city. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you into your hands. I have given into your hands Jericho, the king thereof, and all the mighty man of valor. That means that there was no strength, nothing that Joshua was not able to accomplish because God gave him the promise. And remember, when God gives you a promise, he keeps it. But we must do what the apostles did. In the last verse of Mark, read it, last verse of the gospel of Mark. And they went out and they preached the gospel and the Lord went with them, worked with them. So we have to do something, okay? We got a promise. But one thing I learned, the only thing that comes true with you or without me is the Word of God. All the prophecies of this book is going to happen no matter what. You and I have no control over that. But there are things that God has promised you that you have to get up and you have to march around the city. You have to take control of your situation and do what you have to do so that the promises of God can be fulfilled in your life. That is, we must do malaka. We must work. Okay, and now verse 2 tells us, it says that, um, verse 3 says, And it shall come to pass, the city, excuse me, and it shall come, <laughs> and ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go about the city once. Thus you shall do six days. So God said, I want you to go around the city. Don't make any noise. Go around the city once and do this for six days because God has a plan. You know, the first thing I see about God when he does things like this is that he wants to upset the enemy. They were afraid. They heard about all the things that God did. They heard how he opened the Red Sea and brought Moses through with the people, a few million people. Now you think about that. <clears throat> That's a feat. And that the Bible tells us that the walls of the water just stood straight up. It made a wall and just stood straight up. That's a miracle. I was speaking to a man a long time ago who told me, well, <clears throat> the waters of the Red Sea really didn't part. There's a time in the year when the waters are very low between the ankle and the knee but basically the knee, how high it is. And so the Israelites crossed over at that time, and so they went through knee-deep water. Well, that's interesting. I mean, the Bible says that God opened the Red Sea and they went through on dry ground. But you know what's the best thing? That um, I told them, well, if it was only knee-deep water, it's still, a, it's still a great miracle. You, you want to know why? Because Pharaoh and his army died in knee-deep water. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> a great Pharaoh and his army died in knee-deep water. No, folks, it was dry ground. <clears throat> and after the 40-year testing, they went through the Jordan on dry ground. You know, God often does two miracles the same, but he does it for two different purposes. One was to deliver them from Egypt, and one was to deliver them from the, the last generation that had failed in obeying the word of God. And so what we need to do is look at the situation and then see what God did, how he 
renew the covenant of circumcision and the Passover. And he had the men of war to get ready. And here we are marching around the war now. And you see how God slowly takes us from defeat. He takes us from a negative situation. And he slowly works in us to bring us to the bank of the river. And then he does a miracle and he brings us through situations. But he expects us when we get to the other side to build a memorial here. There's nothing more important than when God does something, stop, be still, and know that he is God. A lot of people say, what does it mean? Be still and know. Go back. Meditate. Put it in your mind. Infuse it into your heart. It will never leave you. And whenever people ask you questions, you'll be able to tell them the story. And so God told them, I want you and the men of war to come past the city all the men of war, and go about it in the city, and you shall do this for six days. You know something? All the promises of God, like I said, are, are yea and amen. amen. And God spoke to Joshua on a continuum, all the words of the law. God continued to speak to Joshua about the law. He only had the five books from Genesis to Deuteronomy, and it's called the Torah. And folks, the Torah is the foundation. Hey, it's the foundation. It's the foundation of what we build on. So the first five books, uh, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, is the foundation of all the writings that we have today in the Bible. If you remove the Torah, the books of the law, the rest will crumble because everything comes out of that. God made sure of that. Hallelujah. God reminded him to look and to see what he has given him. He says, I have given you into your hands the city. Wow. Not just a block. He gave him the whole city. So what do you do with that? When God puts something in your hand, what do you do with that? Do you prepare yourself to take it? He says, I have given it to you, but yet they had not yet possessed it. And a lot of us, we get a promise from God, and we don't want to do anything about it because it's just too hard to get it fulfilled. I know what God said, and I, I believe it, but I just don't know if I can do it. Then you don't believe it. Because if you believe it, you will walk in it. And when, when, watch this, when it's time for us to take the victory, God puts it in our hand. I love that. Every time God shows me something, he says, I'm going to give that to you. I hold it in my hand, and I wait for it. I remember when I was in, uh, before I got my recording studio, the Lord promised me, because a person backed out on me, we're supposed to start a recording studio together. This was, I was about 24 at the time, so talking about a, a ways back. And um, he promised that he would work with me, but what happened, someone else stepped in that had a studio, and the guy said, why build a studio when I can work with this guy? And so they kind of kicked me out of the, the box. And when that happened, that broke my heart. And the Lord told me something. I'll never forget it. He said, I'm, I'm going to give you the studio. I'm going to give you the studio. It was always, I'm, I am going to do that for you. And today, I have a full-blown recording studio. I've seen the promise slowly. <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> it, believe me, it wasn't in one day. We had to work, put back into it, work, put back into it. And at times, I'll tell you, we could, we could have used the money for something else. And I said, I said, babe, she says, go ahead, do what you got to do. And today, we don't got to really buy nothing. We have everything we need and more. See, it's in increments. Vic the victory that get God gave us on the cross is complete. But the victory that we walk in because of the cross is in increments. And we have to be steady. We have to continue on. That's why we fight to be here. We struggle sometimes to be here, but we're here. 7.30, sometimes a few minutes late because of the internet, but we try to be here every day. Why? Because we're walking around your city. We're walking around your life, and we're speaking the word of God into your life. And we hope that you're taking what you learn here and pass it on to someone else. Walk around their city. What happens? Because when you walk around people's city, 
as you give them the word, the walls will become soft. The, word, the, the walls will come down. I love that. So we must never be afraid of the opposition or the resources of the enemy because they were straightly shut up and they had men of war. There was an army. Hmm. But he says, you shall come past the city. Now, let me just go back here because I want to see something here. I want you to see something about the word compass. Very important. You shall circle it, but watch this. The Hebrew ancient words gives us something. And it's the picture of a thorn and the picture of a, thent, a tent. So we, in other words, a thorn is something you grab onto or who grabs onto you. And a house is a place where you dwell. And it's interesting, when you combine these meanings together, it means turning of the inside. So God tells them to do something. And watch this. The turning of the inside is that movement of the Spirit of God that was upon them that they should do the will of God. You know why? Because on the inside of us, sometimes we become afraid because of the resources of the enemy. We see how big the enemy is, just like, you know, Israel saw the giant Goliath, which we talked about, but David, a small boy compared to, to the giant, he saw an ant. Remember, if you take the GI out of the word giant, you have an ant. And so here's the first conquest to take the first city to become established as a people that they would take the Canaan land. And we're going to get into that because I'm going to speak about the Canaan land and the seven enemies and all that they had to do to dispossess the enemy, to possess the land. You know what's interesting also about it is that they came out of Canaan. Where do you think Israel came out of? Abraham was a pagan until God saved him. And he brought them out of the Chaldeans. This is Canaan. There were gods there. But God took one man, Abraham, and says, you're the one. You're the one I'm going to start the revolution with. You're the one that I'm going to put, that I'm going to put my seed into, and you're, and you're going to preserve it for the rest of eternity. The Jews shall never die. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, God, that he has people on the earth that, that possess and kept the word of God inside and out. Because the Jews are faithful, at least those who are faithful to the law, they keep the law. They still have their Sabbaths. They still have their laws. But we, in Christ, we have the law of Christ. What does that mean? That means that all the laws of the Old Testament were fulfilled in Christ. And Bible, the Bible tells us that he fulfilled all the laws when he died upon the cross. And they're in us, inside and out. It's a turning of the inside and out. And we have to be, watch this, we have to be also very, very sincere about our walk with God. Because think about this, inside and out. If we're not sincere, we're hiding things on the inside and we won't be able to march around the city because the enemy will have an accusation against us. So watch this now. They, they, and, they, and you shall compass the city. Now, what's inter interesting about the word, again, compass, I just want to go one more time here, and is, is sabab, and it means to turn around, to go aside, watch this now, to be brought around. Okay, so we got the message. I want you to encircle the city. Now, here's the, now here's the, the big part of it. After this word, and you shall compass, there's another word that's linked to it. And it's called the Aleph Tav. The Aleph Tav represents the first and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which represents the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last. It is the, it is the, it is the context of the entire Word of God. This is the Aleph Tav. This is the Aleph Tav. This is the Alpha and the Omega. Every word that is written in the Word of God as we study, that's why I like to study the text, because every word, every letter is the word of God. And he says this now, you shall come past the city according to the word that I've given you. So they just were not walking around. They were walking around with the promise of God in their heart, inside and out. And they walked and they did what they have to do. A simple task to walk around the city, which is pretty large, by the way. It's a large city. It didn't, it didn't happen in 10 minutes. And so he said, do this six times. Why? Because six is the number of man, beast, and even Satan. Curse him. 
And so for six days, I want you to do this. Why? Because also we see in Genesis that God created the world in six days. Remember the word, the, the days of creation are six. On the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, they rested. But yet, on the seventh day, God tells them, you're to march around the city seven times. Now imagine if it took an hour to go around. Seven hours you want us to go around the city? It could have taken a little more, a little less. The point is, they had to do it. And then he said, and when you march around the city, on the seventh time, I want you to give a loud blast with the, with the trumpets of the ram's horn. Now let me tell you something about horns. In order for you to have a horn, I have two horns. In order for you to have a ram's horn, a ram has to die. In other words, they sacrifice or they die and they cut off the horn and then they got to clean out the horn. It's like a, it's like a hard nail. So you got to clean out that horn. And after you clean it out, that is smooth. You have to put oil in it and, and, and do some other things so that you can bake it. Watch this. So you can bake it so that the smell of death comes out of that horn. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the horn of our salvation. And what's interesting, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 53 that Jesus was cut off from the land of the living. And they put him in a grave. In other words, God was scraping something out. But watch this. The Bible tells us on the third day, he was risen from the dead, and he's the horn of our salvation, and he does not possess or have the smell of death in him. I want to say something to you, you who are a believer in Christ. The outside is a whole different issue from that which is on the inside. On the inside of you lives the spirit of the living God, the resurrected one, and I want to let you know before God, there is no stench of death in you. You stand and you live and you breathe and you exist in Christ and in Christ because Christ has no smell of death. He cannot, listen now, he cannot accept anything that is dead in him. And the Bible tells us that we are in him. And therefore, the smell of death, the old man, the sin, the life that was contrary and against the, the, the life of God, we are now cleansed because of the blood of Jesus and we are in the horn of our salvation. Now, I want to say something to you now. Very careful. Watch this now. The horn not only had to be cut off and scraped and put into the, into the, into the oven to, to purify it, but it represents strength. Now, let me give you the story about my two horns. I have one horn that is cured and one horn that is not. When I went to Jerusalem, I stopped in a store because I wanted to buy a horn. And so I purchased a horn, but the man did not tell me that the horn was not cured. He didn't tell me that the horn was not ready. But see, in my heart, I had a horn and I blew that horn and I enjoyed it. But every time I blew that horn, there was a stench that came out of it because it had not been cured. Even to this day, if I blow it, it will still have the smell of death. Isn't that something? Now watch this. He told them, I want you to come pass around the city six days, one time a day for six days on the seventh. After the seventh, I want you to take the ram's horn and I want you to blow a loud blast and the people shout with this loud blast. So when, when I take my horn, the first one that's not cured, there's a smell of death. And we had... Uh, a small ministry in the Bronx, and we had a place where we worship. And um, I used to leave my horn there because we used to blow it before the service, just to, just to uh, inaugurate ourselves into the service, you know? Now watch this. I used to leave it in the service, and there was a pit bull that was close by. And that pit bull got into our small sanctuary. And that pit bull went for only one thing, my horn. 
and he bit the mouthpiece of my horn off. Listen to this. And I was upset about it, of course, and told the neighbor about it. Okay, watch this. The reason that he did that is because he smelled blood of death. And he, see, a dog smell is much powerful than us. And he went, he smelled it. And he ate the mouthpiece of my horn. I cut the other part off and I have it. It's just a decoration. And I learned one thing through this. God allowed this to happen to show me. The horn was not cured, number one. And number two, if you have anything inside of you that is contrary, that is, watch this, that is standing in the way of you marching around the possession that God has for you, the enemy can bite you. The enemy will come against you because you still bear things that smell dead. And that's why God, when he brought him through the Jordan, he said, first thing you have to do is you, you, have, to, you have to die. Baptism, you have to die. You have to go through the Jordan, come up, and then you have to recircumcise yourself. That's, that is the men that were not circumcised because you broke covenant. And then I want you to keep the Passover. And then I want you to get ready, get the men ready. And then I want you to now march around your possession. But what I want you to do on the seventh day, which is basically the Sabbath <laughs> I want you to take the ram's horn, not that they're dead, because they had, they're already, those ram's horns were already cured. And when they blew that, that blast of that ram's horn, they were blowing a life-giving sound because there was no death in those ram's horns. And they were blowing it. And they were blowing it and the people were shouting because it was a loud shout and it was, watch this, it was a shout that was alive. It was, listen, it was according to the word of God for they come past the city according to the a left tab, the word that God gave them. They were walking in the word. They were walking with the promises and then they took the ram's horn and they blew it loud. Can you imagine all these priests and the men of war were in front. They were behind, which... <laughs> Now think about this. And they say that the tribe of Dan was behind the priest. The war, the warriors, you had, you had the priest and you had Dan. It says, why Dan? Now this is, this is the, the whole concept. Is that the men of war were, were to protect the priest, if anything. But the priest would go behind the warriors because they would be shouting the blast that would bring the walls down. Watch this now. But why Dan? Because Dan, the, 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 uh, the name Dan represents God is my judge. And what God did by bringing that blast of the ram's horns and the people shouting, the judgment of God fell upon Jericho. And the Bible says the walls went flat down. Folks, I want to let you know that the walls did not crumble and fall over. The walls went straight down into the ground. That's why they were able to go straight in. God made a bridge for them. Now watch this. They found, they found the city of Jericho. And you know what they found? They found that the walls were sunken in. And when they went down, when they dug in, they found baskets of wheat still preserved. Do you know what wheat represents in the Bible? Wheat represents the believers. Because we are preserved in Christ. You may push us down. But we are preserved in Christ. You may come against us, but we are preserved in Christ. And listen to this. They were not only preserved, but they were still usable today. Think about it. That the wheat of God does not disappear, does not die. If God has to put you in a basket to preserve you, just ask Paul when they were looking for him. The Bible says that they took a basket, they put Paul in it, and they, they lowered him down the window because they were going to kill him. God will preserve his wheat. God will preserve his people as they march around the city. The walls went straight down. And I want to let you know right now that there are things that you're facing. First, let God take those things out of you that smell. The things, watch the things of the world that you're still holding on to. Let that thing go. That is a stench to God. You will never have the total victory until you submit yourself to God. We just don't want the sun to shine on the evil and the good. We want the blessing that is above the natural. God bless you. 
Have a wonderful, spirit-filled day. In order to have the victory, we have to walk in increments and let God take those things that are inside of us out. There's a song that we used to sing, Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. God bless you.